Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. So today we're going to be looking at the polls from Thursday, October 4th, ranging from multiple Senate races all the way down to some House races, and pretty much the narrowation, I guess that's the word, I guess, um, narrowing of the race in terms of the generic ballot nationwide. So uh, we'll start off with the Florida Senate race, and then we'll finish off in the 2018 generic congressional vote. Overall, not that good news, not that many um, polls that show good news for Democrats uh, nationwide in terms of the Senate. But in terms of some House races, uh, they definitely do have possibilities of winning there. So starting off in the Florida Senate race, this is a Senate race that was previously in the GOP column. This was a Democratic state, then a Republican state, and now it has since gone back to or towards the Democratic column. Bill Nelson leading by only 1%. So the reason why I'm mentioning this only 1% is because he led by 1% yesterday and the day before that, but he was leading by 7, 4, and now 1. So his race has narrowed down. Yes, there was a time that was not too long ago that Rick Scott was leading. So obviously, Bill Nelson has done very uh, well in terms of gaining back voters because usually when you're about a month away from the general election you don't really gain that many voters back especially enough to go from rick scott plus four all the way up to bill nelson plus seven so that poll may have been an outlier but pretty much a one point lead is something you might expect from the state of florida but state of florida is alone in terms of who it supports for the uh senate races there we can go over to the state of tennessee that shows marsha blackburn leading by five percent that is phenomenal having a republican candidate leading by five percent sure it's a republican state but this is a democrat who previously led by double digits in some opinion polls so going from double digits for the democrats or even single digits in a republican state down to republicans plus five yes it's a closer it's a closer race than people would expect in a state like tennessee which is stereotyped as a republican state However, it still was a race that was presumably to be won by the Democrats if everything was going to go and keep on track. So because the most recent poll taken, besides this Fox News poll, shows Phil Brett is in leading by 5%. So right now with Marsha Blackburn in leading by 5%, either the swing is 10% or it's somewhere around a tie, which doesn't really spell out good news, considering that typically most undecided voters in a Republican state would go to the GOP, just like most undecided voters in a Democratic state would likely go towards the Democratic Party. So, Tennessee and Florida. Florida, a little bit good. No, sorry, that's not the right word for it. Uh, pretty good numbers to the Democrats. Uh, better numbers in Tennessee for the GOP. But then we can move over to the Indiana Senate race. So, Braun versus Donnelly versus Brenton. I have no idea who Brenton is. Guess a candidate who's actually getting 6% getting of the vote. So enough to be included in the poll from Fox News. But Donnelly leads by 2%. So those are not really good numbers. This is a Democratic incumbent, but still, a win is a win regardless. Having a Democrat lead in Indiana definitely is something to note, but a 2% lead for an incumbent definitely should have some warning signs leading into the general election. So now we can move over to the state of Missouri. This is the most annoying Senate race out of them all because the data that comes out of this race is super, either super close or a tie. I mean, when I say that, I mean it literally. If we go ahead and click on the poll data itself, we see Hawley plus 0 0.4. That is not a substantial lead. Before it was McCaskill plus 2 at some point, uh, but then if we actually go down, it was Hawley plus 6 all the way down to 4, then McCaskill from 2 to 4, and then Hawley plus 2, close race, tie, 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 Hawley plus 3, close race, Hawley plus 2, close race, McCaskill plus 3, close race, and then a Fox News poll that shows a tie. So four consecutive ties before, uh, very close races, um, very hard race to gauge. In the North Dakota Senate race, not so much though. The GOP holding on to its lead. So they led by 4%, and then 4% again, and then 10% in a recent poll, and I've seen a number of arguments saying it's an outlier. This new Fox News poll show Kevin, shows Kevin Kramer leading by 12%. This race has already been characterized as a GOP state by rural clear politics. That's a huge warning sign. Okay, having a Republican pick up a state in what should be a Democratic wave year when it comes down to one to two states for the balance of the Senate, it definitely matters. Okay, they don't need North Dakota to win, but if they want to win, they probably would be carrying North Dakota along with a couple of other states. Because if North Dakota is going, they have a Democratic incumbent, you can make the argument that Tennessee, Arizona, possibly even Texas could go. Okay. At this point in time, Nevada is pretty much that only GOP state people actually are betting a lot of money on because, yes, it does seem like it could be closer than Arizona. But, you know, once you lead into the general election, it'll probably be more in the favor of the Democrats, typically because Hillary Clinton was underperforming in polls than what she actually did perform on Election Day. So right now we look at those Senate races, Kevin Kramer leading by 12 percent. I don't know what argument you can make for the Democrats at this point. It doesn't look like it's going to be their race in the Arizona Senate race. Martha McSally versus Kirsten Sinema. Kirsten Sinema leads by 2 percent. So narrowing down in terms of the race, but still a pretty considerable lead for a Democrat in the state of Arizona, a Republican state. With 
with Democratic tendencies or toss-up tendencies, whatever, it still goes into the Democratic column by 2%, according to this new poll from Fox News. That pretty much wraps up our, I believe, yes, six Senate races from Florida, Tennessee, Indiana, Missouri, North Dakota, and Arizona. Overall, all these Senate races, some of them do spell out good news for the Democrats, not so much in North Dakota. That is probably the only area where I really think this is going to severely damage the Democrats, because if they are losing in a state like North Dakota, yes, it is a Republican state, but they currently have an incumbent from this state. So if they're losing here, they're going to need to make a gain there and also someone else to have a net gain of one. So for example, if the Republicans win in North Dakota, Democrats will need to win in Nevada and Arizona just to get plus one because the GOP will be gaining a seat if the current trend continues and it goes even to possibly even to a safe margin for the Republican candidate in the state of North Dakota. So again, that wraps up all six Senate races. Now we can move over to the governor races from Tennessee, Arizona, Michigan, South Carolina, and then some House races from Michigan, Arizona, Minnesota, Virginia, Wisconsin, sorry, not Wisconsin, Virginia again, and then the state of Florida two President Trump job approval polls, and then 2018 congressional vote, which actually has some national implications. So right now, if we look at the Arizona, sorry, not Arizona, yeah, actually, uh, we can start off, let's start off with the Tennessee governor race, Lee plus 17, okay? That is huge, okay? Having our GOP candidate lead by double digits in a race that could be contested based off the Senate race itself. Uh, but before, this race was a little bit closer than you might expect, okay? Lee plus 11. It is now up to Lee plus 17. So clearly some more excitement on the GOP side. Yes, an 11-point win is a huge win. I'm not denying that. But a 17-point win is better. So right now, Lee leads by 17%. That likely could be dragging, possibly drag over Martha McSally into the finish line come 2018. So right now we look at, sorry, not Martha McSally, uh, Marsha Blackburn in the state of Tennessee. Because if we're looking at uh, the pure numbers itself, right now Fox News shows Blackburn leading by 5%. Okay, Lee leads by 17%. Lee has increased by 6%. Marsha Blackburn has increased by, uh, not really increased by 10%, but in terms of the spread by 10%. So if we look at the numbers there, really looks good for the Republicans in the state of Tennessee, especially since the Democrats are eyeing this one up and running a top-notch candidate that they probably can't run for any other office uh, in the future. So the Arizona governor race is the next to cover. So the reason why I mentioned Arizona is because I said something about Martha McSally because I was looking at this number and it really didn't make sense to me. How does Tennessee elect a GOP governor, governor, not Senate race, governor, less than they do in Arizona? Because right now, if we look at this poll, Fox News shows Doug Ducey leading by 18%. Y yes. It is the state of Arizona, but Doug Ducey's leads has significantly gone up from before. Before it was Garcia plus one, then Ducey plus four, and then Ducey plus 11. So it was a double digit lead all the way back in Fox News. But then Ducey plus four, plus four, plus eight, now plus 12, and then plus 18, giving us a final average of plus nine. Very good numbers <clears throat> for the GOP in the Arizona governor race. Some people did think it could be contested at this point in time. The Arizona governor race is likely to go towards the Republican Party. Now, for the Michigan governor race, Gretchen Whitmer leading by 12%. That is phenomenal for her. I mean, we're looking at a seat that is currently held by a GOP incumbent governor. <coughs> Definitely would look very good if a Democrat is able to carry the seat by double digits, which means there is probably going to be a huge turnaround come some future elections. And then in the South Carolina governor race, Martha McSally, not Martha McSally, Henry McMaster leading. I don't know why they all have similar names, similar first names, similar last names with a Mick, whatever. Henry McMaster leads by 14% in the state of South Carolina. Not too unexpected. Uh, nothing different than what I would personally expect, nor should you personally expect from the South Carolina governor race. So we've covered the Senate races, we've covered the governor races, and now we can move over into the House district. Michigan 8th District. I believe this is near Lansing, Michigan, uh, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Right now, the Republican candidate is leading by 3%. So right now, if we look at the race itself, it pretty much should be a pretty Republican district, but it has narrowed down to a 3% lead for a GOP incumbent. That's definitely a race to watch come the end of 2018. For the Arizona 2nd District, this is where the Republicans are getting their butts kicked because right now, Kirkpatrick Kirkpatrick leads by 11%, okay? That may seem surprising, even though 2016 Senate race, whatever. We're looking at the numbers there. She leads by 11%, all right, in a Republican district. The GOP thinks they could possibly hold on to this one. Probably not. If this New York Times poll is anything uh, but inaccurate. So right now, if we just look at the numbers itself, no matter how you construe the uh, poll numbers there, very good for the Democrats. And then for the Minnesota 2nd District, the Democrat leads by 12%. In the Virginia 2nd District, Taylor leads by 8%. So a Democratic lead and then a Republican lead in Virginia. Uh, but Virginia is pretty much expected in that 2nd District. The 2nd District definitely is a little bit more contested than you might expect, but a Democrat lead by 12% regardless. In the Virginia 10th District, Barbara Comstock versus uh, Wexton. I don't know the name, but Wexton leads by 7%, I believe. Let's see what it is. I believe... 
I was going to say Jessica. So it's Jennifer uh, Wexton leads by 7%. So that's very good considering a most recent poll from New York Times shows Wexton leading as well. And then the Florida 16th District, Buchanan versus Shapiro uh, right now. Buchanan leads by 9%, which is pretty good for the uh, GOP there. Now we can move over to the President Trump job approval rating. Russ Musson reports, of course. Oh, okay. So here's weird. This is a weird one. Approve plus one. First time we've seen one of these polls in a very long time. In fact, it was only a tie before. Actually, no. So it wasn't only a tie. Uh, let's see. Rasmussen report showing the same exact numbers before. Let's see if we can find one. Else, I believe maybe earlier on in the beginning of his presidency. Yes. So right over there. But right now, Rasmussen report shows him at plus one. Um, definitely has gone back up from before. I mean, it was at 40%. Now it's up to, I mean, at one point it was at 44%. So good numbers for the, G the GOP and the uh president there now we can look at the uh 2018 generic congressional vote so the reason why i'm mentioning this is because before from this pollster the democrats led by 10 percent they now lead by two percent so republican uh, enthusiasm has gone up democratic enthusiasm has gone down could be because of the kavanaugh hearings it could be because of other factors but i'm going to place my money on the kavanaugh hearings right now with the democrats even though it is uh I guess justified in terms of what they're doing, just making sure uh, things go through. You could argue they're being obstructionist. You could argue that they're not uh, tough enough on Kavanaugh. But right now, uh, a 2% lead for Democrats is something pretty much unheard of because if we're looking at the numbers here, even Rasmussen reports shows the uh, Democrats leading by 5%. This is the only poll that is actually showing a 2% or less than 5% lead for the Democrats out of all of the recent ones. So pretty surprising. Could be an outlier. Could not be. Uh, we'll see when we get there in 2018. So thank you guys for watching this video. Comment down suggestions below, and I will see you all tomorrow.